Critic hasn't been good in years. This review brought me to tears. Incredibly pretentious, absurdly shallow. Critic, please just stop the show. Hey, Critic, please, for God's sake, stop the show. All in all, you're just not as good as James Rolfe. I've been gone four months. I know, and I left you guys hanging with my horrible school project video, and I'm sorry, but I just watched something so horrible that it just, it broke me. It baffles me that this even exists. But before I get into that, here's a little history lesson. Let's go back to the beginning of time, in the year of our Lord, 2007. I was just a wee lad who learned how to work a laptop, and I discovered this magical hell that we call YouTube. And the first thing that I clicked on was a video of a man named Doug Walker wearing a hat and blazer, yelling about the first Bayformers film. That man would later become known as the Nostalgia Critic, and I would continue to watch him religiously for many years after that, and it would pave the way for my discovery of the film criticism community and of far better YouTubers than he. But something would happen. His reviews, new and old, would just start to lose me. I wasn't laughing at them as I once used to. In fact, they would make me cringe or feel secondhand embarrassment. But despite me not liking his old videos as much as I used to, I pushed on only to see his content quickly become worse and worse up to this point. Uh, side note, I'm not going to touch on the change the channel controversy a whole lot. This video is going to be focusing more on this terrible video specifically. This is a review of uh, their review of The Wall, essentially. I'm not going to be touching on the controversy, their terrible business management, and their poor business practices. I'm focusing only on reviewing this new video. Because this new video... Jesus. Where do I even begin? F for real though, Doug Walker has constantly proven that he is one of the most incompetent filmmakers on YouTube. And this is the pinnacle of all of the bad things about his videos. If you're an aspiring filmmaker, or even a film critic, you need to look at this video and take notes from it, because everything that he does and says in this video are precisely the things that you should not do in a review. I wrote this script for the video out of anger and hatred, so uh, I'm probably going to jump around the thing a lot. And if I do, I'm sorry, but this is probably the most anger and hate-fueled script that I've ever written. So, let's just talk about this terrible video already. He constantly bashes this film for being too pretentious and full of itself, while this review is the absolute pinnacle of both factors. He's saying this movie's trying way too hard to be deep while he's standing in front of literal giant posters of himself in the background. This is the same guy that made a movie a few years ago on the Nostalgia Critic. The movie was called To Boldly Flee. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. Please don't watch it. The movie is three hours long and all he does in that movie is stroke his ego and act full of himself. 
and he's calling this movie pretentious? Like, jeez, have some self-awareness, Doug. There's a comment that he made in this video that really made me mad as somebody who's struggled with depression. He makes a comment about the movie about Pink, the character in the film. He says, I'm successful with millions. Why, aren't, why am I not happy? The absolute ignorance of this guy. You know, remember, remember Robin Williams? Chester Bennington? Chris Cornell? Anthony Bourdain? Another thing about this video that makes me furious is that he just does not do any research on the context behind the wall. He parodies the song Another Brick in the Wall Part 2 in the movie, which is probably the second worst song on the video's album aside from Comfortably Dumb. And he makes it seem like it's just a song about Roger Waters complaining about school being too hard and grr, I don't like school, I'm edgy, Wah. That's not at all why Another Brick in the Wall Part 2 was written. If you do some research, you'll find out Roger Waters was growing up in the 50s in post-war Britain. During those days, a school teacher could strike and verbally abuse a kid in their class and they'd face no repercussions. So I'd say the complaints and the lyrics of uh, Another Brick in the Wall Part 2 are extremely well justified. And Doug just, is just like, oh, just, just grow a pair, you, just grow a pair, you little... What, Come on, man. Just grow up. Are you serious? And it's not just this video in which he fails to just do research on a topic. Look at his Sailor Moon video. Even when I was a fan of the Nostalgia Critic, I didn't like this video. It's not because I'm a Sailor Moon fan or anything. It's because he just chooses not to do research on the context behind certain aspects of the show. I don't want to touch on this a whole lot, but if you want more info on this, uh, go watch Miss Anthropony's video on it. Another thing, I feel like I say that a lot in this video, but another thing about this film, it's just, it's just hypocrisy. He says that the runtime for this movie is way too long. For a little more context, this review was 40 minutes long. And his movie to boldly flee was three hours long. The amount of hypocrisy, it's, it's flabbergasting. There's a sponsor segment in this video. It's pretty terrible. But then Doug does this. He starts to promote the album for this review. It's terrible. I don't recommend you uh, listen to it. If anything, just go watch Anthony Fantano's not good review of it. Now here's the thing about this. He claims that it's a love letter to Pink Floyd's music. If it's a love letter to Pink Floyd's music, why is the album 99.9% .9 bashing it and calling it pretentious? This is not a love letter. You know, in fact, I hate everything, put it best. You know what is a love letter? This, Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz is a love letter to action films. It lovingly pokes fun at its cliches but it does it well enough that it can be classified as a great action movie in its own right. This is not a love letter. This is the equivalent of making a diss track, saying all of these terrible things about somebody, and then saying, I love you, man. 
what? And after everything in this video, all of the bashing of the album and the music and the surface level complaints that a 12 year old would have against this movie, he ends this 40 minute long video with saying, eh, it was okay. Gee, Doug, it took you 40 minutes just to say that. And you're complaining that the movie's runtime is way too long. I've mentioned this already, and I hate using this word because I feel it's used way too much in the film community, but this movie is absurdly pretentious. I honestly think Doug couldn't stroke his ego anymore since To Boldly Flee, but this is next level pretension. He's so unself-aware of himself that whenever he calls out this movie for having no subtlety and being way too full of itself, all I see is a 37-year-old man dressed like a hipster who needs to go take a long look in the mirror. I think I've said enough about the review's album enough like, you just go watch uh, Anthony Fantano's review of it. But the only thing I will say about it is that no amount of Rob Scallon or Corey Taylor is going to make it even at least listenable. And the sad part is, his fans are just taking his word for it. After the hashtag change the channel stuff, they just stuck with him. And whatever video he makes... They just take his word for it. They just feel, they feel that they don't need to see the movie because he's already seen it and they should just follow his opinion as if it's the only one that matters. If you're a Nostalgia Critic fan and you're watching this, please just watch The Wall, listen to the album, or just even look at its Wikipedia page. There's so much context behind the film that I f feel like he just blatantly left out s to spread his own view. Or he just didn't do any research. There's more to the trippy and strange visual flair that this movie has than just being strange imagery. Nostalgia Critic has not made me laugh in a very, very long time. In fact, just thinking about watching another one of his videos is giving me a headache right now. This is probably one of the worst YouTube videos I've ever seen, and it's without a doubt the worst movie review that I have ever seen. My final verdict for this Nostalgia Critic episode is a very rare negative 5 out of 10. Guys, don't watch this video. Just don't. Go watch go watch the wall. Go in fact go listen to the wall. Go listen to Pink Floyd's other stuff. I recommend uh The Wall, Dark Side of the Moon, Wish You Were Here, Animals, uh their Pulse Live album. Just do not watch this video, please. I'm gonna go cry in the bathtub now. I'm my review cinema. I watched Nostalgia Critics The Wall, so you don't have to.